Believe it or not, the sun exists and it's quite bright and I'm gonna go blind. There are a lot of poker rooms in this country. Many of them are dust, some of them are great. Among the great ones lies Chasers, which is here in Salem, New Hampshire. I would rather be nowhere else other than this beautiful place right here where bankrolls go to die and legends of dusters are born. I hope to find myself among the many measly crows picking up the remains of uh, dying bankrolls. We've been among the dusters the past few weeks, I'm not gonna lie to you. We are on a downswing. We've lost six and a half thousand dollars amongst our last 11 sessions. Had a really, really large win yesterday, but this month has been uh, not kind to us. This is like the only job where you can lose you believe that guy? This guy revs his engine on a four-way intersection. He must have some meat packing downstairs. No compensation whatsoever. Anyways, as I was saying, please leave a like on this video and share it with someone at your poker table. I really want to do this full time and I just hired an editor. So shout out Cody. Thank you for doing this. Without further ado, let's get to the hands. I just bought an iPhone 13. I was testing out the visual quality. My God. Look how crisp these cards look. From here on out, the quality is taking a big uptick. I have two hands to review before we get into the two five streets. Let me explain. So we were the one two streets. It was a straddle with a $10 raise. Call, call, call. Guy on the button jammed for like 75. I wake up with ace king suit in the small blind. I have 280 behind. I say, yeah, I'm all in. <laughs> and then it folds over to the hijack who also ships it for around eighty dollars we're three ways all in in this one two game this is a familiar sight because all i've done recently i see a big red button that says all in and i just here we go, here we go. this is night. what we live for i have this that seems pretty good okay i, I also have this so we're off to a run out I think we're ahead, or at least a favorite, until the guy to my right shows pocket aces, which, like, yeah, we're a little bit behind that. And then the hijack shows pocket queens. Oh, my God, Lord, help us. Uh, there are three spades coming, though, that's for sure. Nine, nine, six would have been good. There are three spades. Newsflash, it's absolutely not, you dimwit. Get rolled by pocket aces your first hand. Aces takes the main pot, we take the side pot against pocket queens. G freaking G's. On to hand number two. It is a PLO bomb pot. So my brother in Christ, we must pray to hit a flop or else we're just gonna go broke every single time. We look down at 10, six, five, four. The first board comes out seven, five, queen, two diamonds. And the bottom board comes out three, four, seven. So we flop the joint and on both boards, there's a flush draw. I'm in the small blind, I check. Next guy bets pot, 150, call. Then another call, then another call, gets back to me. We have one option. I pot that bitch for 1050. Next guy shifts it for under that. Then my friend Matt in the hijack jams all in for close to $2,000. Listen, I've been running pretty bad. If I don't shop this, then there's something wrong and we're going three ways all in to a run out. Top board comes an offsuit three, giving us the stone cold nutter butters, immediately no sweat, no problem whatsoever. Bottom board comes a brick, brick, brick. We scoop both, take down a massive, massive, close to $5,000 pod. That was a much, much needed victory. And we capped that night off with a $3,000 profit. Hopefully it continues tonight. All right, boys. We're playing here at Chasers, 2-5, no limit hold them, in for $1,000, let's get rowdy. In the first hand of the night, we have Queen Jack offsuit in the straddle. Action folds to the big blind who raises to 20, and I just make the call. Flop comes 10-7-5 with two spades. Big blind checks it over to me. I don't really have much other than two overs and a backdoor flush draw. I just check it back. The turn is the two of hearts, introducing a backdoor flush, and now the big blind leads for $35.
This bet doesn't make much sense to me because if he had a 10, I would expect a bet on the flop. Yeah, he could have hands like 9s or 8s, even a 7. That's betting for protection slash value. But I think the most likely case is that with so many draws available, he is also on one. Plus, we have the queen of spades. So if a third spade comes in, I think we could credibly rep it. I decide to make the call, and we go off to a river which comes the two of spades. Big blind does not slow down, however, and he bets $80 with around 300 behind. Once again, this bet doesn't make a lot of sense to me, because if he had a flush draw on the flop, I think he would continue betting. If he had hands like 9s or 8s, I think he would check call, rather than leading out. I'm getting sketchy vibes, not really a big believer, so I'm going to put him to the test. If he is on a missed draw, or a weak hand, I don't think we have to necessarily go all in. I think any raise will get through. No need to risk at all. I decide to raise it up to $225, and the big blind thinks about it for a little while, then folds. Glad we got this one through. Here we have pocket jacks in the small blind. There are two limps to me, and I raise it up to $60. Only the straddler and the low jack limper call. Flop comes queen 7-4 with two spades. There's a card over my pair. We are out of position. If you needed a reason to check, well, I just gave you two. Action ends up checking around, and we go three ways to a turn card, which comes the queen of spades. Pairing the top card, but also bringing in the front door flush. I'm feeling confident that no one has a queen, but someone could easily have spades. So I decide to check it and see how the other players react. The straddler now leads out for $125. I plan on calling the straddler's bet because I think he could be doing this with an infinite amount of hands, just trying to steal it since he saw weakness, but that plan changes when the low jack makes the call. Okay, one of these players could easily still have a flush, and we don't have a spade to bail us out. I decide to fold, and they go heads up to a river, which comes the four of diamonds, straddler jams, Low jack folds six five of spades face up, and then the straddler shows jack eight of diamonds for the stone cold bluff like a boss. <laughs> nice hand, man. Next, we have a bomb pot. That's cool. Fun fact there's no bomb pots allowed here at Chasers, so we call it dealer celebration. Under the gun puts in $20, then every player next to act just proceeds with a call, 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 call. And you go eight ways to a blind raised flop. <laughs> and that's pretty much the bomb pot. It's such a lame version of it. You can't do double boards. You can't do anything really particular. It's okay. Whatever. We have 9-8 offsuit in this bomb pot. And the flop comes 10-6-3, two diamonds in a club. That doesn't seem to connect with us much. But we do have a gut shot. I check. And the same player from last hand bets out $150. Next to act calls. Then the big blind check raises to $500. Yeah, I think that amount is just a hair over what I'm willing to call for a gut shot, especially with a front door flush draw that we don't have. I release my cards into the muck. Then the player from last hand jams all in, then call call. So three ways all into a run out of... Seven, queen. Front door flush gets there, but the big blind doesn't care. He goes boss mode, flips over pocket threes for a set. Player from last hand has 10 six of hearts, and then God knows what the other guy had because he mucks shamelessly, and the guy in the big blind takes down a massive two-point-something thousand-dollar pot. Wow. This table is great. We have an update. Mid-session update. This has nothing to do with poker, but shoot! There is a waitress right inside there. Literal bombshell. From one guy to another, smoke show. There's no question about it. Listen, winning a bomb pot, that would be great. Securing her number would be like, we've been on a downswing recently. I think I would rather lose another five sessions, snag her number, and we'd call it a win for the month. How we're going to do that? Absolutely not sure at the moment. Really not sure. 
that has to happen at some point. So that's just the mid-session update. We're going to continue to play. So we'll keep you updated if anything interesting happens. That is the most interesting thing that's happened today, I promise you. Here we are with Ace Queen of Spades in the straddle. Cutoff raises to $35. Then the big blind makes the call. Since the raise is coming from late position, and there's an additional player in here, I'd rather take this hand heads up. Plus, I have two pretty cards. More money is going in the middle, I promise you. I 3-bet to $175, which is 4x plus 35 for the caller. Neither player want the smoke. Both wisely fold. Here we have Ace-10 of clubs on the button. I raise it up to $30, and the straddler makes it $120 to go. I'm around 1000 behind, and the straddler covers me, so plenty left to play for. In this case, button versus blind. Ace-10 suited is a standard call, so that's what I do. We go heads up to a flop, which comes queen-6-5 with two clubs. Favorable flop for us, as we have the nut flush draw. The straddler continues with an $80 bet. That seems like a fair price to realize their equity. So I make the call. The turn is a great one. It's the six of clubs. Love it. We improve to the nut flush. The board is paired, but realistically, the only thing we have to worry about is pocket queens. And if he has that hand, then so be it. Great hand. You get all of my money. The straddler continues betting, but he puts out $125. I perceive a lot of weakness here. This is quite an odd sizing. It seems like he's trying to target all hands with a club. Maybe he has kings with the king of club or jacks with the jack of clubs. I don't know. It, I just perceived weakness. He could have just complete air and wants to keep the betting lead without bloating up the pot too much. I don't know. I sense weakness. But even if he was strong, I'm in position with the nut flush. I'm not really scared of much at all. I'm never raising. So I make the call, and we go off to a river card, which is an innocuous three. The straddler continues betting once more. This time he fires out $230. I count out my chips, and turns out I have around 650 behind. If he has pocket queens, then God bless his soul. If he had pocket jacks, I'd expect a check call on the flop. So we're realistically only losing to pocket queens here. If he has a boat, so be it. You deserve all of my money. Good sir, I am all in. He doesn't snap call, which is a great sign. Now we are praying for a call. The straddler thinks about it for quite some time before electing on a fold. Things are continuing in the right direction as we pick up a nice sizable pot. Soon afterwards, we look down at yet another beautiful hand of the same suit. Last hand was the smaller brother, this one's the older brother. It's ace king of clubs. Straddle is on, button limps, and I raise it up to $45. Only the big blind makes the call. We go heads up to a flop, which comes... I don't know. It's king 6-6. Six, six. I don't know how to describe this other than it's solid. We have nothing really to be afraid of other than maybe like 7-6. Again, if you have one of those, congratulations, you're getting all of my money. Since it's such a dry flop, I'm obviously going to continue betting, but no need to go so large. I size down to $35, and the big blind does something weird. He raises to $100. I think a 3-bet would be a bit of an overplay, because if he's bluffing, it just folds it out. And if he has value, like a 6, then we're just owning ourselves to death. I proceed with a call, and the turn peels off God knows what. I check, playing in flow, and he decides that he's not done betting, this time firing out $125. With this sizing, it felt really, really weak, but if I call here, I think he's checking back all rivers. Since he's prone to check back most rivers, I'd rather target his value hands that can call off, like king-queen or even ace-king for a chop. I know what you're thinking, ace-king, Corey, wouldn't he three about that pre-flop? No, not at all. He's just calling. So he could easily have king-queen or ace-king. And against those hands, I want to put in a raise and get max value. Especially if a third club peels off on the river. 
I want to be able to jam all in. He has $1,200 behind. A $300 raise here would give me a perfect jam size on the river. So that's what I do. I raised up to $300. Unfortunately, the big blind lets it go. I don't think we were getting any more value on the river anyways. So I'm happy with how we played this one. Let's move on to the next hand. Development on the story, by the way. Put the little development at the... Okay, you got it. As I was playing, I saw her walking over, and I was like, I need to talk to her. So I called her over, and as soon as she got there, I was like, oh, shit, she's a waitress. We've never spoken before. So I was like, can I just get a tap water? And she's like, yeah. And that was, that was it. <laughs> so she delivered me a water. I tipped her a dollar. We're basically in love at this point, and we're going to get married next month. We have pocket eights in the double straddle. The small blind and big blind limp, I raise it up to $50. Both players make the call, and we go three ways to a flop in position, which comes 10, nine, seven, rainbow. Action checks to me, and this board is going to favor my opponent's calling range much heavier than it does my raising range. I'm not gonna have a lot of bets here. I check it, and we go three ways to a turn card, which comes the jack of hearts. We improve to a straight, but the small blind seems to like this card as well, as he fires $125. That is a large size compared to the size of the pot. I don't think a raise makes much sense. A fold, obviously, out of the question. That leaves one option. We stick in the call and go off to a river card, which comes an absolute brick. The big blind is not done betting. He fires $225. I think we're just chopping this a majority of the time. We could possibly be losing to hands like king-queen. Unrealistic, yeah, but certainly possible. I don't think a raise as a bluff makes much sense, considering we double block the hands that we want him to have. So I just flick in the call. Small blind shows 8-7 offsuit, and we go chop-chop like a deli shop. For a few orbits, the game was playing 2-5-10-20, here we have a premium in the double straddle. We look down at 6-5 offsuit. Low jack, high jack, button, and the straddler all limp to me. And as the double straddle, I don't even have an option. It's technically a $20 blind raise. We go five ways to a flop, which comes a 7-4 with two hearts. I didn't even realize that we had an open and a straight draw until I double checked my cards. That was a welcoming surprise. The low jack fires $65 into the field, and everyone else folds. It's a little sketchy chasing a straight when there's a flush draw on board because some of our outs might be dirty, but I'm not going to fold for this price, so I make the call, and the turn peels off the two of clubs. That's not going to help us in any capacity. I check it, and this time the low jack checks back. I think if he had an ace, he would continue betting for value to charge all of drawing hands. Considering he checked, I think a flush draw is the most likely option. With that in mind, we go off to a river card, which comes a magical three of spades. We river the stone cold nutter butters. Now, I put my opponent on a flush draw, but the issue is I have a terminal condition called hyperactive playability disorder. That's a term that I just coined on the spot, made it up completely. It means that when my hand strength improves dramatically, especially when I wasn't expecting it to, then my action also changes. Considering I thought he was on a flush draw, the best course of action is to check and allow him to fire. But I got way too excited, and I ended up firing $175. Unfortunately, he lets it go. If I checked, maybe he checks back to missed flush draw, but it would always be good to give him the opportunity. And a check also leaves the door open for a check raise. We were very deep, around $1,500 left to play for. Check, check, check. That was the play. We didn't do it. Oh well, let's move on. Hey, abrupt ending. In the game for $1,000, out for $1,775 for a profit of $775. Thank you so much for watching. New videos Monday and Thursday. Got it? Write it in your calendar. Monday, Thursday. Okay. See you later.